Welcome back to another Q&A. In this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions that you had from me on my Instagram stories. I have three pages of questions this time. Let's try to get through them. The first one is by Microbag Friend. Do cats all about luxury tag? And I did, I did it for the handbag version. I'm gonna link it to up here if you haven't seen it yet. I am also thinking of doing it maybe for my accessories. Since I don't have that many SLGs, I can probably pull everything together, including my costume jewelry, my belts, my scarves. I might even do one for ready to wear. I'm not sure yet, but at least my handbag one is already done, so have a watch. And her second question is, what kind of videos do you like to watch? That's a good question. I like to watch so many types of videos. Last night, I was watching a cooking show from a YouTuber from Hong Kong, The Cook Guide. He's really entertaining. He's kind of funny, actually, but not too unserious. He's still pretty serious. And during his cooking process, he explains things that can happen. He's sort of like not an expert, but it doesn't matter. He's still a good cook and he tries all kinds of really interesting recipes. A lot of times he'll actually even cook stuff that's already uh, not very expensive to buy pre-made, especially like in Asia and Hong Kong, but he'll just make it because it's like interesting or uh, yeah anyway I love watching him because uh, he speaks my mother tongue and um, he's actually really entertaining I also really like watching vlogs from uh, mainly one couple their channel is called Wally they have a pretty similar background to mine in a way that we live uh, in North America but we are uh, Asian heritage also because they have quite a few pets they're dogs are really really cute their bunnies are really cute and i just love their personalities like them as people there's also tina young that i really like watching so tina's into makeup and beauty and she's very versatile her videos are not so much like makeup techniques and whatnot although she does have makeup tutorials but it's also about trying a lot of different trends and uh you know her videos are really professional i remember when she just started when she wasn't even at a million yet and now she's at three million so she's doing super well and i really love how she goes about with her content it's so informative obviously i'm subscribed to so many people on the luxury community but i'm mostly watching luxury whenever i'm in a mindset of research just because that's exactly why i started making my content is because i feel like my input and my insight can be helpful for someone who's looking exactly at the same thing as mine or at least they can sort of go through my thought process so i love watching luxury for that way and of course i love watching unboxings because it's always nice to see what other people are getting and also it's nice to see what's new in a way but it gets really addictive so i don't watch that as religiously but i do watch it a lot it's just that in terms of uh, what I love to watch most is mostly for entertainment purposes. I'm going to be linking those three different channels that I talked about because I personally really love their content and I just find it relaxing. I, I usually kind of kill time when I watch them. Uh, but like I said, I watch all kinds of content, but it depends on what mindset I'm on. Venture Lux, thoughts and advice for someone who wants to downsize their collection. My tip is to probably go through your collection one by one. So let's just talk about handbags only. Uh, I would literally take out that one handbag, look at it, and then think about whether it's a bag that you absolutely cannot let go. So that, put it on one pile, and that's pile number one. Those are the ones that you know for a fact that you're not going to let go no matter what, because you either love the bag very much or there's sentimental value. Whatever the reason is, it does not matter. That's in your pile number one. And then your pile number two is if when you look at the bag, maybe you haven't used it for a while. Maybe it's a bag that doesn't really bring you as much joy as you thought. Uh, maybe because it's a substitute or a duplicate, whatever the reason is. So that's like a maybe pile, so that's number two. And lastly, your third pile should be bags that you know for sure that you're gonna uh, want to part with because it's either just gonna sit there and you don't have any sort of feelings or any sort of um, uh, joy associated with it at all, uh, but you don't 
dislike it is just that you know that you don't really need that bag in your collection any, anymore anyway so that's pile number three so we know now that pile number three is all the bags that can go already so with the pile number two you just have to go through it again one more time use a criteria that maybe uh, if you haven't worn it in the last year or six months it depends really because like I said 2020 has been so weird uh, it makes a lot of sense if you haven't worn a bag for a long time so maybe use a different cr criteria for you it can be different I tend to rotate my bags all the time so I would wear a bag um, you know quite seldomly because I have to rotate between 20 some bags but even then I still have those that I know for sure I don't want to part with and those that I'm like maybe and those that I'm like you know what it's fine also keep in mind to not get distracted don't think that oh maybe I'll need it for whatever occasion honestly if if it's just that one time you most likely will be able to find a substitute in your pile number one anyway if your goal is to downsize think about why think about the why all the time like if the reason is so compelling that you need to downsize then it makes it a lot easier the next question by bag Halariri thoughts on purse addiction. I don't know if addiction is what I would use for myself. I don't know if I've, I'm actually addicted to purses. Obsession maybe. Addiction. Because addiction is something that you will do even in secret, right? Like you'll do in secret and you're almost like ashamed of it because there's a negative connotation to addiction, I feel. So maybe obsession is what you really mean. So yeah, definitely is a real, real thing. Um, obsessing about luxury and obsessing about purse is a real thing. Just like we were discussing in our last uh, live show, luxury live show, one of the question is, whether we're constantly obsessed about luxury fashion. And the thing is, yes, because I inherently already really love fashion myself. But depending on what stages of life you're in, sometimes you can afford more, sometimes you can afford less. In fact, I actually use the term passionate. I'm really passionate about luxury fashion or fashion in general. Not necessarily luxury, but like fashion in general, which does include a lot of luxury bags and some ready to wear and accessories so i'm definitely very passionate and i don't think that it's necessarily negative unless it becomes an addiction like you said like unless you actually have to hide purchases from your spouse or from whoever your friends or whoever uh your parents and uh definitely don't go overboard like definitely try to avoid getting into debt because of that because then it's really unhealthy then then it's really addiction you're right um but as to anything in life moderation is key so loving things loving materialistic things fashion luxury is fine but everything in moderation and of course you still have to be responsible for every other aspect of your life as well so as long as you can balance all of that then i don't feel like you need to necessarily feel too negative or too uh, bad about loving or being passionate about luxury fashion next question what do you think of the drilled judith lieber bags if you have say a lot of really elegant like black tie sort of evening events to go to i think that they are very stunning uh what do i think of them they are quite pricey just from first impression because i don't own one and of course i haven't really studied the website uh, but aside from that i feel like if you need one and if your life and lifestyle calls for one that you would use quite often then it might be worth it for you to get one for me maybe not so much i can literally substitute any sort of mini bags for an evening bag to be honest even my YSL uptown pouch would be totally fine so I'm happy with that amount of money spent on a clutch bag but it might be your jam so I I say go for it if you love it the next question is by mini footprint facts about you so in last Q&A not the live show but my last actual q and I'm gonna link it um, I have talked a bit on my background so hopefully that's what you mean by facts about me but I also did some older videos in in the past like 50 facts about me type of videos I'm sure I've done one I'll try to dig them up 
and link them down below. If I can't find it, then I might just do another one and make that into a tag or something. We'll see. Um, but yeah, in the last Q&A, I did talk about my background a little bit. And so feel free to rewatch that if you haven't already. And you'll get to know me a bit more. How do you feel about vintage Chanel and do you buy them? Um, how do I feel about them? So handbag wise, I am not attracted to them at all. I don't really feel like it would bring me joy with owning an actual vintage handbag. Usually I just prefer myself to be the first owner, to be the first person putting wear and tear in my bags just because I keep them in such great condition and I take such good care of them that I prefer to be the first owner and so I don't really particularly have any affinity to vintage styles. However, I do think that vintage bags do come into play if you're looking for a style that's no longer made and you can't find it anywhere unless you go vintage, then I think it's a good idea to go for vintage bags. But otherwise, I feel like if you're just trying to save money, I wouldn't go there personally just because are you really saving that much money in the end by going vintage? Because there's several factors you have to take into account. The fact that you're not the first owner, it has probably considerable wear and tear already to begin with which is could be a good thing for some people but for me it's a con and the fact that you know you probably have to get it authenticated all that stress is it worth it not so much for me so i'm not a fan of owning a vintage piece for myself unless i specifically wanted something that is no longer made cannot get it anywhere then sure have I bought any vintage pieces in the past? Yes, I have. I did buy a vintage clutch from eBay uh, a while ago, and it is a vintage clutch from Dior. And it's um, right now it's the oblique print, but back then it was called a Troder print. And so I have since sold it, which is also why I realized that I prefer brand new anyway. As much as I was able to get a good deal in that vintage clutch piece, I just, you know, I used it a couple times, but that's about it. Like I didn't, I didn't feel like compelled to keep it. It wasn't like, I was not so, um, like my heart was not so like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I have one. It's not like that. I, I kind of almost feel like, oh, it's vintage. It's okay. I can let it go, which is why I no longer have that. Lucky Charm Lux. What next color do you think you're gonna get in this Chanel 19? Oh wow, I do love the Chanel 19, but would I get another one? I'm so content with the black lambskin that I have. Yes, I do have it in the lambskin. Uh, the first couple iterations of the Chanel 19 did come in lambskin, especially in the small size. So yes, FYI. But Honestly, I don't feel like I have the urge to get another one, but if I were to get another color, which one should I get? Hmm. I feel like an ivory color would be really nice, but I don't know if I'll go there. I probably wouldn't. I just feel like it will be really nice. Uh, do you know any Canadian personal shoppers for Chanel? I don't. I think in Canada, it is really hard to be a personal shopper. It's not impossible, but I think it's like harder. And so I don't really know any, and plus I don't always buy from a personal shopper because I much prefer buying myself in person, if possible. But I feel like in Canada, especially with the limited number of stores that we have and also the limited stocks that we get, uh, just the clients, the regular clients themselves can already deplete the stock so fast. I know there are still people that buy to resell. That's like... I know that exists. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are those people because I kind of see them on Facebook. You kind of just see them sell stuff often. So why would they sell that often is probably because they resell a lot. So it's possible to find them on Facebook, but it's just that I don't know any of them myself. And like I said, I don't rely on personal shopping for my own pieces. I only go there when I really have to. 
so no unfortunately i don't lucky charm lux i just want to say that the magnetic lashes changed my life thank you oh i'm so glad because yes mine uh these lashes i've been wearing them for so many months pre i want to say pre-covid was it pre-covid already wow so it's almost like so if it's pre-covid it would already be nine months since i have had these pairs so like i said these pairs are basically the the last pair that i got before they changed their designs because now i can't even get these same ones with the four magnets anymore they all just come with the three magnets unless you buy the one with the eyeliner then they come with the four magnets but then you have to buy two separate sets just to stick them together so it's kind of a ripoff i will probably just have to buy two sets with the eyeliner and just stick them together i mean it's not ideal because then you're spending twice the money but yeah i totally agree that these magnetic lashes once you get the whole uh, hang of them and once you know how and if it works for you it's a gem because i don't wear eyeliner or anything i don't wear any eye makeup at all um as of every video but it looks like I have eyeliner and of course my eyes are more perky because they just look more awake with longer lashes so I love them um, in case you guys want to know how to apply them I'm gonna again link the, to that video lucky charm Lux light colored bags are they really hard to care for so as of today you would probably have seen the luxury live show where we uh, our main topic is to talk about how we care about lux our luxury handbags and we're gonna touch on the 10 most common materials from Chanel and LV. For light color bags in general, it is a little trickier just because it really depends on what you wear, first of all, and where you put your bag. So mostly what you wear because the motion of rubbing on your body from crossbody wear or even just from because your body is warm, right? And there's moisture in the air. The friction will over time transfer the color onto the bag. Some materials, even light color ones, are a little easier than others. But regardless, it is something that can very much happen easily or more easily than a dark color bag because on a dark color bag, you don't really see it. It still does it, but you just don't see it. For instance, this is a more lighter color bag. I'm not going to... I'm going to be hand holding this most of the time. Same with my cocoa handle that is a very light gray. I'm going to be hand holding those two bags because that is the best way of preventing color transfer from your clothing, from rubbing from your clothing. And of course, whether, whenever you set it down, do it carefully so that it doesn't tip over. Um, it just takes a little bit more conscience, consciousness and a little bit more awareness. I would just totally avoid dark color clothing and coats and jackets and um, just be a bit more conscientious when I handle it and just try my best to just top handle it to handle it by hand uh, those are probably the best tips that I can give you for light color bags or organizers Samorga or Zumoni with both I've only had nothing but good things to say about them the only difference is that Zumoni is a, a younger company Samorga has been around for many years Samorga also has way way more styles for different handbags of course with Zumoni you can also custom make uh, different ones just by providing your own dimensions you can do the same with Samorga but they also already have a huge repertoire of many different bag styles that exists so you don't have to measure it and make a mistake doing so do you own any chanel brooches of course i do i might do a um well i will i actually will be doing a costume jewelry collection 2020 pretty soon because we're approaching year end which is when i do all my chanel entire chanel collection entire lv collection entire uh, jewelry collection like those type of videos i have this one which is really nice a leather lambskin i have this larger one with no stones and then i have two uh different size smaller ones that are with crystals and they're really cute like this one is really cute when you put it on a on a t-shirt because it's smaller or you can use the 
slightly bigger one on your bigger jackets. Um, this one would look really good on a kind of like a wool coat because it's a bit bigger and also just plain and you don't have to worry about the stones falling off or anything like that. Not that I've ever had any problems. I actually never had any problems. And this one is just a nice one. Black lambskin and it's just really, really classic looking, uh, but also a different shape than all the other CC ones. They, they really shorten the straps on the new Chanel 19 bags. I've actually never tried the new strap length myself, but my friend Kat L did. She is uh, wanting the medium size Chanel 19 and she tried it like at the beginning when the strap length was quite long. And I remember trying the, the medium uh, at the beginning when I was looking for mine, I was, when I was waiting for the small size to come back. It was quite long actually. And then she tried it again more recently. That's like a few months ago already. And it indeed looked a lot shorter on her. I feel like I've seen it on Facebook too, that some people have commented on that as well. But like I said, I have not tried it myself. So ever since I got my Chanel 19, I haven't really tried the Chanel 19 in store again, especially the, the medium size because I haven't tried it in the medium size ever since. And apparently the shortened length is only on the medium size, not on the smaller or the larger size. So it's really just the middle size that has shortened a little bit, which makes sense because the bag itself is already bigger. You really don't need that big of a ch that long of a chain since the bigger the bag, the longer it's going to look already on your body. Bags that you think will look better with age. Okay, well, there are quite a few. I would say that bags that are probably already slouchy or distressed in nature. So definitely the reissue line, definitely the Gabrielle line because of the distressed calfskin. And I would go as far as to say the Chanel 19 as well. Experience with color transfer. So I personally don't have any um, experience with color transfer on my luxury, luxury handbags, but I did have color transfer with my coach bags and with coach especially i tend to be a little bit more risky with the colors that i choose i don't really just go with the darker colors when i buy coach just because it's in a different price range so i have had many color transfer stories in my light color coach bags like i said just the fact that it's light color it doesn't really matter which leather or which fashion house it comes from just because they are lighter color, it will, the color transfer will be apparent because it still happens on darker color. It's just that you don't really see it because it either blends in or it's so light that you can just kind of wipe it and then you, it feels like it's gone, right? Uh, but overall, maybe the bag has darkened. You just probably didn't notice it because it happens so gradually. But with a white bag or with a very light color bag, you see it right away because it's like such a big difference. It's blotchy even, right? Um, depending on which side you wear more. So I have definitely experienced color transfer on light color bags, but never on luxury handbags because I just take care of my really light colored luxury handbags really, really, like I take really good care and I'm super aware of how and where I put it and so yeah it's doesn't matter if it's a more expensive or a more cheaper brand um, color transfer will definitely happen if you wear it the exact same way that you would wear a darker color bag because it's just physics thoughts on the mini size walk so I actually really like it from watching YouTube videos I have not tried it in person but my thoughts from watching the YouTube videos and reviews is that I like that it is a shorter length than the classic walk. So that's number one. And I also like that the size of the wallet itself is smaller than the classic one. The thought of a wallet dangling with a chain on my body just doesn't really appeal to me. Whereas the mini walk, because of its size being a bit smaller and therefore a bit squarer versus more rectangle, because it's squarer and because it's tinier, I do prefer it in terms of 
overall aesthetics and I do prefer that it is a thicker version of a wallet on chain so you have a bit more flexibility with your bulkier items the only concern is that because I do tend to buy the largest phones available knowing that the next new iPhone is going to be bigger than this that's going to be an issue so am I really going to restrict myself with the next piece of technology just because of my bag sizes I'm not sure about that yet so which is why although I do appreciate it more than the classic walk I'm still not sure whether I would take the plunge yet uh, or whether I even need to do it because it might still not suit my needs have you seen the new Balmain leather biker jacket if this is the one that you're referring to I actually have quite a few leather jackets already some from Akash I have some from Sandro I have some from All Saints and they are all really well made lamb skin and the Sandro one that I have is actually absolutely stunning and the leather is so shiny and beautiful and the style even though it does have a bit of fringe around the zipper it's still a very classic cut like just like this one is a very classic cut so you can't go wrong with it um would i really need a Balmain one at this point not really because i don't really wear i mean i do wear my leather jackets but it's just it's a seasonal piece and at this point in my life i don't feel like i really need to replace my current ones with this one just because I already have three or four sitting in my closet at the moment uh, but it is really nice so this one is called the Balma leather perfecto jacket it's very very nice let me see if there's another one okay so this one has gold hardware has a few more details and it's a little boxier so that's another one the price is actually quite more significant on this one so with this one it's too boxy for me I don't like it but that's because I have a much smaller frame and even all my other jackets they're much more uh, fitted to my body anyway with Balmain also their sleeves are extremely long because they use really tall models so likely this will be a problem for me as well would you consider your style to be trendy instead of classic from your choice of bags and outfit that is really interesting because I feel like my style is in between I don't think I'm very classic for sure but I'm also not the most trendy I'm kind of in between really and plus you have to work with the kind of body shape and your own preference as well so with my body shape being a bit more straighter um, a bit more on the thinner side some things just look better on my body than other things like I don't do that well with bodycon dresses I mean I can wear them but because of my lack of curves it you know it's not the most flattering shape of clothing on me you just get to learn your body attributes and what flatters your body type and your aesthetics in general the most and so yeah that's in terms of clothing in terms of bags honestly like you just said I'm not super trendy trendy like I don't go out of my way buying the most seasonal or the most crazy colors but I'm also not super classic either because I do own a lot of seasonal bags and I think the most classic looking bags that I own they are still the seasonal bags like the most classic ones that I own are the cocoa handle the mini flaps uh, I guess if you count the Chanel 19 that's kind of a permanent style or the trendy not trendy cc so those are like my most classic style looking style but they're not the classic flaps so i'm really in between thank you all so much for your questions and i hope that you found it helpful and enjoyable if you're brand new to my channel i would love to have you back so please don't forget to subscribe and i'll talk to you again very soon bye guys